your one-stop shop for all things Impact Wrestling, brought to you by RealNerdCorp.com. We are making an impact with the Wrestling Underground banner, or the Wrestling Underground, the only place where you can hang out with your friends under the house in the basement and rant about Impact Wrestling and other forms of pro wrestling and other dumb things that you think are inconsequential. Because that's what yep. we do here. I am your host, as always, Chad Porto. And joining me is my overly enlarged co-host. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that was meant to, to, to you. That was meant to describe the screen. Why does things open in Google? I don't want Google. If I wanted Google, I would tell you Google. I don't. <sighs> Dumb horror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host as always, Chad Porto, and joining me as always is Zachary Tyler, Pew Pew Duncan, the two biggest podcast hosts in all of Sheboygan. Very big in Sheboygan. We are technically not the biggest. We are number two behind uh, Fred Fingers and the uh, Polka Finger Five. Yeah, yeah. I they mean... have a uh, 95% uh, per capita listen rate, so they're doing pretty the... well for themselves. Yeah, they're, they're, but we're we're eking up there. We're at twenty four per capita, which means for those of you who are un, unfamiliar with what per capita means, uh, that's the number of people per population that tunes in. They're rocking the nearly perfect. We're at a quarter. Uh, that's which is still about f- 14, 15 percent points higher than Fred Astaire dance ball room lesson dancing. Turns out it's hard to do over the radio. Go figure. But still number three. And so, you know, Sheboygan. Doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We are um, one billionth in L.A. <laughs> or, or not as big. <laughs> no. And that's assuming that everyone in L.A. competition out there. <laughs> yes, it is. That's assuming that everyone in L.A. has at least one podcast, which you know isn't true. They have at least three. And a TikTok, whatever that is. It's something. I th- did it replace Vine? It's essentially just new Vine. Good job, whores. <laughs> you found a new way to piss me off. Okay, so I didn't get any photos tonight because I was, um, I, w- I wasn't dragging ass, but I was a bit overly booked, so I, I didn't get a chance to get the images. I barely got done finishing Impact tonight, so. We're just going to have to scroll along with it. Zachary, how's the audio? The audio is splendid, sir. Liar. I mean, wow. I know, maybe. Well, then it sucks. <laughs> you whore. You fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we are. It is time to talk about impact. So let's talk about impact. We open up this week with Jordan Grace. We say Jordan, but it's not. It's just Jordan. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. And that's my fault. I've been saying Jordan. To be fair, it should be Jordanin. Hey, if we're Jordani, Jordani, Grace, Jordaninanini, Grace, Jordanine, Jordanine. Well, there is that uh, Jer- J- Janine Durandamine. <laughs> She's the MMA uh, gal. Um, so Grace took on Tennille Dashwood. Solid matchup. Uh, I liked mm. how they were basing the the match around Jordan's grappling abilities and how she was handling Tessa's, uh, um, not Tessa's, Tennille's, um, what do they say? I think it was like hip control because Jordan's got that that, re- that amateur wrestling base and, the, and that weightlifting mm. power. I think she's got an amateur wrestling base. I could be wrong about that. But she was certainly using amateur wrestling skills, so I thought that was pretty spectacular. Uh, this is a really good opener. I liked it. What do the thoughts, opinions? Yeah, I, th- I I thought it was pretty good. Uh, is particularly for um for it being uh to kneel, but there were there was Tenial. some good um <laughs> there was a a fair amount of uh uh chain wrestling and some good uh storytelling going on in there. So that was good. All right, and then Tessa shows up. The girls beat up uh, Tessa. Tessa Taya. Sorry, too many T's. Tenille. There's Tenile. A... Tessa and Denial. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck a fantastic man. Um, so Taya shows up and they're all like, Row! all right, that was sexist. 
<laughs> there was no cat fight noises involved. They did beat up the blonde, uh, platinum blonde bombshell, and she's all like, "That was rude." <laughs> so rude. I think I think she even pulled like a straight out of the uh, um, full a full house. How rude! I I I can see it. <laughs> and this will come back. I can see it. Yes. Also, I will. I would like to say mm-hmm. that for for Taya to come out and attack Jordan Grace, I understand that Tennille has is is technically a face. I get it, but if she's all about me, 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 then why she is she be? helping Jordan? Right? Like, should she be a face if that's her shtick? It's all about me. Yeah. I mean, and she doesn't necessarily have to be a heel, but it's just like I'm not getting involved with this because this doesn't because this doesn't concern me. <laughs> Speaking of things that don't concern you, Rhino and Moose had a confrontation next to the elevator, and, and Moose is all like, "Hey, Rhino, did you th- see the thing with Rob where I beat him with the the no jackhammer needed spear, and your little teeny tiny gore can get the job done?" And Moose was all like, or Rhino's all like. You hungry? And Moose is like, eh, not right now. But come see me in about an hour. And Ryan goes, okay. I'm going to see you in an hour. <laughs> so then we go to the north. And they're harassing Willie Mac in the stairwell. Racism, racism, racism. <laughs> see, this is what happens when you build a border on the wrong side of the country. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Scott Steiner joke. Shall we tell Barack Obama that they're building the wall on the wrong side of the country? Scotty, you were best friends with Petey. What are you doing? That scene still breaks my heart. Tears. Uh, so they're trying to break up Swan and, and uh, Mac by basically saying, hey, Swan didn't come out to help you. No, he didn't. He told he didn't come out to help you. Hey, man, that's kind of messed up. Are you going to be there to help him? Yeah, man, you're going to be there to help him. Hey man, Swan took the last of the cookies. Yeah man, he took the he took the last of the cookies. That was mine. Just shut up, Josh. Oh, see. I mean, yeah, he totally took the last of the cookies. So they're really trying to you know needle Mac and Swan and see if they can break the two buddies up. It might work uh-huh. too. Like usually it the might. faces uh, the faces come out stronger than ever. We're unified for twelve years now. This might lead to a heel turn, and if it does, what a great idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if not, then all right. Just hopefully they lose to the North because the North are fantastic heels. <laughs> yeah, they 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 they're real good. <laughs> Don't bogart me with some amazingness. So this next match was Phantasmum, Rajmajasm, Super Cal Fragilistic Expiala. What's up, Doc? It's TJP versus the Daga. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good match. So we had um, Skinny Falaba versus Mexican Davy Richards. Mm-hmm. And it was a wonderful encounter of oh, the Flippy Doodahs and the Flum 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 Jum Jumps. And yes, the, and the, the, go on. The, the Flippy Doodahs and the Wayma Lama Ding Dongs. But honestly... The parts that I enjoyed the most were the were the mat wrestling. You know, I was just about to say I don't remember anything from this match because it's kind of, it, I I do, but I here's the thing. I'm kind of having like a matrix reboot kind of like situation where like trying to have like a, a callback to memories is like causing them to flash in my head in Technicolor like uh, um, inverse uh, photo mm-hmm. negative kind of thing, and like every time it's like. Ah! because I was watching Major League Wrestling right before I watched Impact, and on MLW they had a TJP Brian Pillman Jr. match. <laughs> Ooh. So now I'm kind of like, wait, which one was this? <laughs> there was a great moment, though, from the MLW match that I remember where um, Brian Pillman Jr. had TJP down on his back in a headlock. And TJP was like like wiggling on his elbows and shoulders, and then all of a sudden you see him fucking crab walk out of the headlock. And Brian Pillman <laughs> Jr.'s on the on the ground with his arms still clenched together, looks down, and then just looks over his shoulder like, what the fuck? 
(laughs) (laughs) So that was the best moment of TJP's week, but that didn't happen on this show. Uh, no. This this really showed you just how athletic Daga is. Like this um, was a great match because like, a lot of people who watch Impact aren't me. They don't watch fucking billions of hours of TV every week. Well, wrestling TV, so they don't mm-hmm. really know just how truly amazing Daga is. And he's shown it in instances, but with Impact's TV format, he doesn't always get a chance to show it consistently. Right. So this was probably the best match today, and this was a fantastic match by TJP. Could be an early contender for the 2020 year-end awards. Ooh. Could be. God knows uh, AEW's not going to be up on there anytime soon. Yeah. <sighs> that show's gone downhill so fast. TJP gets the win after a heel hook into a regal stretch, and Daga taps out. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, the Desi Hit Squad show up, and Fall Ball's like, nah, dog. <laughs> and then Dog is like, nah, dog. And then Sherrod's like, nah, dogs. And Dog is like, god damn it. <laughs> and then the Desi Hit Squad beat down Fall Ball, D- Daga, and TJB. This may build up to a match at Hard to Kill. We will find out eventually. Although they have announced more matches, which we'll get to at the end of the show. We then get RVD and Katie Forb coming out. Um... They had uh, bumped into Brian Cage in the back, and uh, RVD basically said, "Hey, we're booked for Hard to Kill. Let's 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 see what's up." So then Cage runs out while they're in the ring and clears out. And yeah, the funny thing is, um, Katie Forbes. I have a feeling is going to be one of those rare misses by Impact. I don't find yeah. her very attractive. She's not a good worker. And she sounds like a dying cat. Yeah. What exactly really, is she? Yeah, we, re- we really don't need her t- on the mic. You definitely know she's only on TV because Rob was like, you know, dude, I'm not going to sign unless you sign my girl as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's how that went down. Like, you know. Yeah. I do like delusional RVD. It's it, it, it's it's a fun, fun for all, fun for mm. all ages. <laughs> uh, backstage, we get uh, James Mitchell. Uh, Rosemary is trying to get involved with Susie. Mitchell tries to pull Susie away, and uh, Havoc and Rosemary start fighting until Susie screams and shakes the screen, and my PS4 froze. I'm sure those had nothing to do with one another. She broke it. <laughs> that's that's not neither confirmed nor denied. Then we have Madison Rain. She's backstage with Kira Hogan. Taya arrives, and she basically goes, if you have my back, I will make sure that each of you get a title shot. And they're like, bet. And thus we're off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's all there is. <laughs> <laughs> we then got a real fun match between uh, Ethan Page and Rich Swan, where... Um, I love Swan's kicks. Like he did, he does this step over the shoulder and he kicks the dude in the face on his way uh, over, and it's a great move. I love it. It's so good. And he did it to poor Ethan Page's face. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Willie Mac though ends up getting involved because there are shenanigans. Willie Mac gets Rich Swan DQ'd, and there's yes. a conversation between Mac and Swan about, hey, what, what, why'd you do that, yo? Yes, the one the one time that's a run in actually gets someone disqualified. Crazy. At least they finally did something right. Right. Let's let's just see. Let's have a little bit of consistency here. You shut your whore mouth. <laughs> Backstage, Rhino goes up to Moose and goes, "Hey, it's been an hour. Are you hungry yet?" And Moose is like, "Yeah, totally." He goes, "All right, here's a knuckle sandwich." Whack. <laughs> <laughs> and then the two men brawl. Yes. I set that joke up two minutes ago, and it paid off. Ha ha. Ah. Sometimes you gotta make them wait for it. Right? Like, you all knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. We then got Joey Ryan dealing with AC Romero. Yeah. Joey Ryan won. Moving on. <laughs> Michael Elgin <laughs> stole Eddie, Eddie Rich Trophy. It's exactly what Larry Zonka said in the review. Moving right along. 
So, yeah, anything with Joy Ryan and even AC Romero by extension is just stuff I'm not really all that interested in. I, I will watch it out of respect. And with Joy Ryan, there are some genuine concerns that I have about involvement with him and things he's done in the past and his less than decent behavior. <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't know. I, the, the day. The one, yeah. The one part of this match I did enjoy was Johnny Swinger running in and trying to do the the dick flex, but with his fanny pack. <laughs> that was that was that was pretty great. I'm not even going to tell you who's winning the uh, year end gimmick of the year, <laughs> but it's pretty obvious. <laughs> it's, it's pretty 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 easy to go with. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Ace Austin versus PD is next. Um, poor Eddie lost his trophy and didn't even get a chance to look for it. <laughs> right? Poor guy. This is a really good match between Ace, uh, Ace, God damn it. Ace and PD. Uh, Ace gets the win, though, because obviously mm-hmm. you can't have PD have nice things. Yeah. <laughs> Afterwards, a though. Little though yeah, a little pee pump. Afterwards, Ace's uh, a goddamn it, Ace is like, uh, "Hey, Mrs. Miguel, lick, lick, lick. What up, girl? That uh, that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. That was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, so then we go. Uh, any thoughts on the Ace Austin P Williams match? Um. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good match. I. I'm kind of hoping that they start going into this whole angle that um, Don Callis has been kind of simmering with uh, Petey Williams and that his his uh, his go-to move is the Canadian Destroyer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if he hits it, automatic win. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't been able to hit it for a while. It is a he, great he story. He telegraphs it. Uh, he telegraphs it, it's, and everyone uh, everyone knows it's coming. So let's let's actually dig deeper into this is what I want. That'd be nice. I'd like that. <clears throat> to this date, only one person has ever kicked out of P.D. Williams' as Canadian Destroyer. Eli Drake. Eli Drake. It's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we get uh, Ace backstage. He uh, runs into Trey Miguel. Trey is not happy. And he gets in his face. Nah. But the Reno scum show up and they're like, hey. You standing all alone. I forget the rest of the words from Pink Floyd's song. I'm not a Pink Floyd fan. Fuck them. I I can't say that I've ever really listened to Pink Floyd. You don't need to. You really don't. Yeah. Uh, then we go backstage. It, not backstage. We go out to the ring. It is time for Sammy to expose Dessa. Um, he basically says everything you expect him to say. Yeah, yeah, kind of a like. I mean, it's always great promo work from Sammy, but the whole build up to he's got to expose the truth about Tessa. He didn't really do anything. There was no like sh- when there's a segment that's supposed to expose something. There's supposed to be like some sort of shocking reveal. He really just said Tessa's been handed everything, and I've had to work for everything. And boy, did that set Tessa off. Oh. <laughs> so pissed. How dare you say truthful things? Well, that's the thing. Tessa's actually gotten into real-life arguments about this. Um, Tessa did a tryout match with Lucha Underground in like season two or three of their show. Yeah. And Eva Lee's got in her face, basically oh. saying, if I had a famous last name, I'd get everywhere, too. And this was, you know, during a time when Tessa was very adamant that she and her father had a giant falling out for a while. You know, she moved out of the house when she was like 17 or 18. So there was a lot of misconceptions about her and her career. And that was, you know, one of them is like, hey, you get handed everything because your last name. But that's not actually true because she was with NXT. I shouldn't say she was with NXT. She had a shot with NXT. They didn't say. Yeah, wasn't she in the inaugural, like, women's tournament? She was. Uh, she got signed by Impact uh, and Women of Wrestling to be their, kind of their faces of the company, but 
that was only after she established herself as a genuinely great worker. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of misconception about Tessa, which is what they're playing off of is, is that misconception. So it's pretty much guaranteed that Ivelisse won't be coming into the company anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, they I mean, bl- I, I will, I, I'll say it does make a lot more, it, it adds a little more to it when you actually pull that in. But when it's just Sammy saying it without any backup to it, it doesn't really come off as it's, it's, it's hard hitting. No, it does not. Um, this would then lead into a giant brawl that where they went around New York City and brawled outside, uh, resulting in several giant leaps off of a small uh, truck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look at that giant leap. Two and a half feet in the bed of a truck. Oh, that moving truck sure is high. Good thing they only went into the container portion that's a foot and a half off the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they jumped from a Volkswagen Beetle door. Super scary. <laughs> Terrifying. Jeff Hardy's jumping off the Empire State Building. These cats are jumping off of a uh, turned-over wheel. <laughs> you need, need to step your game up there, Jeffro. <laughs> right. You can jump 118 stories off the building, but can you handle 118 inches? I don't think so, kid. <laughs> so, uh, overall, I thought this was a pretty damn solid show. Yeah, I'd say so. We are going to be uh, missing impact for the next two weeks. So, Yes. No, no, no mass impact. <laughs> for the foreseeable two weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know. So long, farewell, Avidus, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so that takes us to uh, the, the the next part of our conversation. Mm. We, we have uh, the multiple conversations. Part two. Part do they say. De. Ugh. Ugh. Acid reflux. So Moose is taking on Rhino at Hard to Kill. You excited Correct. about this match? Yes, I am excited about this match. Uh, you know, there's always the fun thing of, oh, it's it's the spear versus the gore or similar moves of that nature. What which, what move is actually the better move? You know, you, you can... Uh, it's very easy to build off a good story like that. I'm... Uh, and, yeah. And, <clears throat> and while Rhino hasn't had too many wins under his belt since coming in back. He's had some pretty solid matches, so mm-hmm. well, it, it, it'll be good. Well, I for one think that this is exploitation and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even keep it serious. I was going to say, how dare Impact put a moose and a rhino in a cage and, and let them fight like, like, like they're beneath them. Well, I PETA, PETA is going to be all over this. Right. Who do you think would win in a real fight, a moose or a rhino? Mm. In a real fight, I'd probably say a rhino. Uh, I um, feel like they're they're bigger. I feel like they have tougher <clears throat> skin than, than moose. I'm going to say it. I think it all comes down on home field advantage. If you're in the Serengeti of Africa, yeah, Rhino's going to go to the fuck out of a moose. But if you're in the, the lower mountains of Canada, that moose is going to stomp on Rhino like, uh, like, like a plague. Just like, fada, fada, fada. <laughs> Ooh, you don't know how to go up hills, do you, bitch? Ooh, look at you rolling down the hill. <laughs> oh, look at you trying to get up. Ooh, you frozen now, bitch. It's 48 degrees below zero. You dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this moose uh, taunts particularly, but there you go. I guess all moose is taunt. <laughs> yeah. We also got the announcement of Sawyer Fulton versus Ken Shamrock. Um, I like how all the villains are on like the giant red, uh, 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 giants like back end of the of the photos, while the face is like, "I'm just a little guy here to do the big thing." Are you excited for Fulton versus Shamrock? I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm excited for it because I'm. Um, Fult. I've never been all that impressed with Fulton. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, he's he's just a large, he's just a big guy that will throw a choke slam in there every once in a while, and he's he's fine for what he is. Yes, he 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 works for what for what they give him. Mm-hmm. But I I do I do kind of like what's like Fulton's obsession with Shamrock. <laughs> I, that has been kind of interesting. So we'll, we'll we'll see how this goes. I mean, I don't expect this match to be very long <laughs> but 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 it, but it should be in, it should be interesting i for one i'm excited i'm so excited and i just can't hide it i'm about to lose control and i think i like it most of you should have ken shamrock so yeah to this date one of the 10 biggest missed opportunities in impact history was not bringing in Ken Shamrock between 2006 and 2010 to view Kurt Angle. Yeah. The last one. That's fair. That would have been such a goddamn amazing feud. And then we got the cage versus Robert VD, which is actually a flipped impose where the good guy is the giant red snarling. And the bad guy is the, by the by, that's Rob Van Dam from 20 years ago. <laughs> like if you look at the, uh, the the photo, that is definitely not today, Rob Van Dam. <laughs> I hate yeah. I, I hate when wrestling companies do that. Oh, you're the worst. <laughs> uh, are you excited for Cage RVD? Mm, I I can't I can't say that I've ever been really excited for anything involving Van Dam. Um, blasphemous whore. <laughs> it is interesting. It was very interesting to see RVD and Brian Cage standing next to each other in the ring because it, it, it gives you an interesting perspective at how not how Brian Cage is not actually as big as he appears to be. He's very big, he's not tall. Yes, he, he's very muscular. He's he's very thick, he's, very dense, but he's not he, tall. He's five foot nine, wide. <laughs> <laughs> he's only six foot tall. So you know, when you're five nine wide and five thirteenths tall, you know that's four inches. <laughs> that's it. Mm-hmm. That's why he looks like a, a human bowling ball. Uh, we also have announcements that, uh, this is a great name for a show. I think they used it before. The Friday, the February 21st Twitch show is going to be called Outbreak. And Mm. the Friday, Saturday, February 22nd show, did I say 21st for Twitch? Yes. Okay. So I just want to make sure I got that right. So the 21st is the Twitch show, and then the 22nd is Sacrifice on Impact Plus. Who? Yeah. I like that they finally have this shit down pat. I don't need to worry about watching um, the live uh, Impact Plus show alongside the fucking uh, episode of Impact. Right. Granted, yeah, they had to buy their own network to get that accomplished, but hey, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> at, le- at least they weren't going to just wait around for it. They're like, no, mm-hmm. we're going to make some moves. I appreciate that. So real quickly, I wanna I wanna go through the the awards with you. We're, we're gonna talk okay. more about this tomorrow as well. So double header. <gasps> so I, I gave each of you fuckers two weeks to send me um, suggestions, adaptations, surmisings, Ooh. amusements, and holiday mm. gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> So, if at any point you realize that there's someone on this list you didn't think should have been, you had your chance, you fuckaloids. That's me trying yeah. to co opt the Herculoids name. Mm. Fuckaloids. So, Wrestler of the Year, uh, you have to understand that all of our categories are a combination of fan reaction, booking, and talent. So, don't get mad at us right. just because someone's on this list that you don't think should have been. Wrestler mm-hmm. of the Year, Seth Rollins, Nick Aldis. We got uh, the, the Kazuchika Okada. Hang on, I, I want to make sure that I can actually see all of these per. Uh, yeah, that's close enough. Nope. Hang on. 
There we go. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right, so <clears throat> the Kazuchika Okada. I don't know why I always say the Kazuchika Okada, but there you go. The Kazuchika Okada. The Kazuchika Okada. Then we have Johnny Impact, who made his return to the WWE programming tonight at NXT. He's Ooh. the leader of the un of the Unfortunate Sons, which is an unfortunate gimmick for him to be involved in. The Unfortunate Sons went from being a world champion on a on a major cable network to being the quarterly sidekick of the Forgotten Sons gimmick on the second rated Re Wednesday Night Wrestling po uh, programming. Good job, John. Hmm. That's a step down. We then got Chris Jericho, mm -hmm. Jacob Fatu of MLW, and Samhi Karhan. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. I think I was dragged to my head as you. So many things. <laughs> I think I was dragged to my head as you. So then we go on to most consistent performer, Nick Aldis, Will Ospreay, the Kazuchika Okada, Jane O'Brien, Tessa mm. Blanchard, Samhi Karhan. <laughs> hate myself. And John Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I am. I accept it. <laughs> Tag Team of the Year. LAX, The Rascals, Gorillas of Destiny, The North, The New Day, The Undisputed Era, and The Von Erichs. Not Marshall and Ross, but Kevin and Ross. Uh, Ke uh, Ke Kevin and Keith? Kevin... Kerry. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Fucked it up. <laughs> Our uh, indie development wrestler of the year, which is going to be a lot harder to do next year. Thanks, NXT. Dasher Hatfield, mm -hmm. Nick Aldis, Mercedes Martinez, Justin Smooth, Nicole Savoy, Chris Statlander, and Jeff Cobb. <clears throat> Our foreign company wrestler of the year, which I believe is a new one for us. Well, that may not be. I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. Sometimes I just throw shit at the wall, and if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, I just claim it has. <laughs> Yeah, this this is we did this award last year. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We did, we didn't even do a podcast last year. How old are we? Twenty four. God, that was a while ago. <laughs> um, so Kazu, the Kazuchiko Kat of New Japan, Jay White of New Japan, Kaito Kayan Kayomiya of Pro Wrestling Noah, Kento Miyahara of All Japan, Nibla Roja of CML, CMLL. And uh, Daga of AAA and Mayu Yuki of Ice Ribbon, which is the uh, Joshi promotion out in the Japan. <laughs> Home of the Okada. <clears throat> Our mic worker of the years are Moose, the Rascals, Chris Jericho, the New Day, Sammy Callan, Eli Drake, he's in the game, Rosemary. Our best gimmicks are the Fiend, Nick Aldis' world's champ, Rosemary is the demon. <clears throat> She's been nominated for this award for like four straight years. Yes. Injustices of MLW and their social campaigning. Sue Young's alter ego of Susie. Johnny Swinger's stuck in the 80s gimmick. And Moose, best athlete alive gimmick. Most improved, Kelly Klein of Ring of Honor. Kira Hogan of Impact Wrestling. Moose of Impact Wrestling. John Moxley of New Japan and AEW. Carl Fredericks of New Japan's uh, Pro Wrestling School. <clears throat> Rhea Ripley of NXT and Ace Austin of Impact. Arrival of the year. This is the biggest debuts. Kenta, John Moxley, Michael Elgin, Chris Jericho, Tim Thatcher, Eli Drake, and Rob Van Dam. Yay. Come back at the yeah. end. This is the Impact slogan right here. Like Everything here is, is Impact related. <laughs> Johnny Swinger, Rob Van Dam, Ken Shamrock, Eli Drake, Rosemary, Rhino. And then the lone non-impact wrestler, L.A. Park. <laughs> Yay. Lower card standout, Dominic Garini, Chad Gable, The Rascals, Falaba, Carl Fredericks, Tom Lawler, and Leo Rush. Females of the year, Tessa Blanchard, Ty Valkyrie, Becky Lynch, Kelly Klein, Bailey, the Beast of Women of Wrestling, as well as Allison K. Hmm. Bust of the year. Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, EC3, Lashley, Rusev, Kofi Kingston, ACH. They all have something in common. <laughs> what could that be, Zach? <laughs> Don't say it. World. Racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Looks at EC3. <laughs> 
Rollins, Strowman, EC3, Lashley, Rusev, Kofi, and ACH. They have all been giant disappointments in the WWE. Go figure. Our news story of the year is Pro Wrestling No Getting Purchased and Rebooted. Uh, Roman Reigns in remission. Killer Cross's impact drama. AEW forms. New Japan parent company buys stardom. The biggest Joshi promotion in Japan. Which is a women's wrestling promotion for those of you that don't know what Joshi is. Impact Wrestling buys access. Technically, Impact's parent buys access, but still. Ring of Honor's downfall and misconduct allegations. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <gasps> Male feud of the year. Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan. LAX versus Lucha Bros. Cody versus Dustin Rhodes. Kenta versus New Japan Dojo. Contra Unit versus Devon Erickson Lawler. Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. And Moose versus the Sport of MMA. Yippee ki mother trucker. Women's female feud of the year. Tessa Blanchard versus Gail Kim. Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae. Taya Valkyrie versus Rosemary. The Beast versus Jungle Girl. Allison Kay versus Thunder Rosa. Charlotte Flair versus Trish Stratus. And Bianca Belair versus Shauna Baszler. Baz. Match of the year. Tanahashi versus Kenny Omega. Russell Kingdom 13. Will Ospreay versus Shingo Takagi, best of the Super Juniors 2019 finale. Josh Barnett versus Minoru Suzuki at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport from back in April. Mr. Touchdown versus Dasher Hatfield at Once Upon a Beginning in Chikara's show back in April for the WrestleMania weekend, which is also when Bloodsport happened. Um, Cody versus Dustin at Double or Nothing. The Lucha Bros versus LAX at Rebellion. Or Pete Dunn versus Walter at NXT New York. And yet it wasn't in Madison Square Garden, so fuck that. And finally, yeah. the most popular of the year, The Fiend, Sammy Callahan, Tessa Blanchard, Le Champion, Chris Jericho, The Kazuchika Okada, Becky Lynch, and Kofi Kingston. Those are your nominees for this year's Wrestling Underground Podcast Awards. I mean, we've changed the name 12 times. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's still the same awards, same categories, mm -hmm. same way to vote. Go to realnerdcorp.com, click on the 2019 awards. It's up there in the, the uh, here, I'll show you. Go, go to the website. It's, it's, it's going to look like, it's going to look like this. Hang on. It it's looks going, like that. It's going to look like this. We, 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 you, got the, you got the Christmas cord. You got, also, <laughs> you got the little snowmen that are like, hey, what's up? You got this little monkeys that are like, I'm busy. Then you got these trees with presents for the crew. They're nothing. They're toys. They're just they're just put their props, <laughs> just just to fuck with. <laughs> then you scroll down. You you see. Oh, hey, look! It, it's the evil has has be you know is in or begun or something. I forgot what that name of the goddamn podcast. <laughs> it's our end of power recap. You, then you go. You, you you see this right here? It's a little green dot. You click it. Click 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 mm -hmm, click click. Mm -hmm. And then click, there it click, is. Click click click. Right, right there, the 2019 Wrestling Underground Awards. Bam, with the little monkeys all like chilling. Then you, then you just click on the photo. Just bam, just bam, just bam, 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 bam. Then it takes you to the voting screen. Bam, look at that. Bam. Then you, then you go vote. Done. And then feel free to peruse the website. Enjoy it. Peruse. Spend time. Peruse. Yes. At your own leisure. <laughs> um, Thackeray, now what do you Chat. think of the awards? Um, so, something that, I, uh, that I'm not, I, I haven't been keeping up with, with much on the on the double, double E side. Well, I can review TLC for you. You want to hear it? Awful? Garbage? I was going to say it sucked, so yeah. <laughs> But the the fiend mm -hmm. is 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 the fiend good? Is the fiend no. dumb? <laughs> okay. No, see, I don't try to do this just off of my own perception because then WWE would never be represented. <laughs> right. is, is the fiend over? The fiend is over. It has a lot of fans on the internets. People are okay. are very excited for it, but it's being misused just like everything else the WWE does because. It's, a fucking terribly ran company. Of course. So this is the 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 second chance of Bray Wyatt, essentially. <laughs> you you can say it like that, but we all know or it. the third or fourth or 
twelfth or however many. Well, it's it's a chance implies that this time he can succeed. He can't. Ah, we know this. We accept this. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's what <clears throat> they they did a Hell in a Cell match where uh, it went to a no contest with the Fiend and Seth Rollins. Yeah. Seth Rollins used a paper mache sledgehammer on <laughs> the Fiend, and the ref's like, "No, Seth, this isn't you. Stop, Seth. I want the old Seth back. I want the good Seth back. Give me the Seth that I love. Give me the Seth that I need." That's a American Dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Stop rubbing my hair, Dick. Oh, come on, Dick. Stop rubbing my hair. This isn't like you, Dick. I want the old Dick back. I want the Dick that I love back. The Dick that I need. Come on, Dick. <laughs> Uh, I will steal all your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I have not updated the woman crush for this week. Um, it's hard for me to find a better option at the moment than the the young lady who plays um, Mia Queen. Especially when she has her natural red hair. She is uh, gorgeous in all ways. Catherine McNamara. She is very Irish- and, of course, how can you top time your dreamers rest of the week? But I will try after the show, so that'll be up on the website. Uh, Any final thoughts? Mm, none from me. Well, then, good night from Saginaw. Good night from Poughkeepsie. Good night from where are we from? Sheboygan. Good night from Sheboygan. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving us a chance. Here's your rundown for this week. Twitter is N E R D C O R P. Instagram is Real Nerd Corp. We are on the Wrestling Underground on Twitter at Wrestling Under G. We're also on YouTube and Twitch by going to the website, which you can go to by typing in realnerdcorp.com. Looking for the links for the YouTube and Twitch accounts, as well as our Patreon, as well as our t-shirt shop. Links to all that shit's on the website, realnerdcorp.com. If I need to explain to you how to navigate a website, how the fuck did you get on here in the first place? (laughs) Great question. (laughs) Uh, You can also find us on Podbean at realnerdcorp.podbean.com or by downloading the Podbean app to your mobile device and or cell phone and searching Nerdcorp. Zachary can be found on Twitter at... Nope. Don't care. <laughs> that only matters in April. Uh, yep. You can find Zachary on DeviantArt and Instagram at the same handle at Radiance2020, R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020. And you can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-R-P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. And you can find me at the wrestling, uh, not the wrestling, uh, at um, fansitemma.com. By the by, I got home improvement on. Yeah. I, I, I've often contested that my first two crushes, three if you count the fact that two are twins, are T and Tamara Maori and the little elf girl from the first Santa Claus movie. But my hmm. third may have been Brad's girlfriend. What's the elf girl's name? Judy? Judy, yes, Judy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she's 34 now, I think. And she's rocking. <laughs> <laughs> She she got out of the acting game, but she, they did like a, like a "Where's Judy?" from the Santa Claus article on her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Jennifer from Home Improvement, L- little blonde mm. chick. I always liked her. <laughs> <laughs> I was always so mad at Brad. Like, what's you got that I don't have besides cool spiky blonde hair and tall and older than me and a TV show? <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> never mind. I wonder what that chick's up to. She's got to be in her mid thirties by now. Yeah. To look it up. She was also on Boy Meets World. Was she? Do you remember the episode where Corey starts dating this really nice blonde girl, and he starts, um, kind of not fantasizing, but like dreaming about him being an old man still married to her? They want you to take the roles. <laughs> That's her. They want you <laughs> okay. to take the roles. <laughs> oh, Corey, and to think I spent my whole life loving you. And she's all like smiley and happy. And Corey's like, What? And then Sean comes down. He's, he's like fucking 12 years old. He's like bent over with the, with the cane. Corey, Corey, is that you? <laughs> Shawnee, my boy. And he just starts pouring fucking uh, um, non sugar 
uh, uh, extract into his into his fucking sweatshirt. <laughs> Just starts pouring it in. Oh god, what a great episode! <laughs> All right, who was your uh, first celebrity crush? Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not. Let's. I don't know, honestly. Do you do you have one that you can remember liking at some point? I saw the. Um. I mean, I, I, I've dug Natalie Portman since Attack the Clones. (laughs) That's right. She was in that. She was the she president's was. daughter. I don't blame you for that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was a little cutie. <laughs> of course, I was terrified of fucking Martians showing up and zapping me with their their skeleton array. I was like, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they made sure that everyone who died looked like Christmas decorations, though. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, um, Christina Ricci from Casper. Ah, oh, yes, same. <laughs> Christina Ricci now. <laughs> what up? Fair. Bro? Fair. Christina Ricci in um, um, Speed Racer. Was yes. she in that? Yes. She was the girlfriend. I never saw that movie. <laughs> it's actually really good. Is it? Yeah, it actually is. Like it's spent, it, took, it cost like $2 billion and made like 48 cents, but still. It's fantastic. <laughs> Shockingly enough. Right? There's a scene where the monkey's driving. Of course. Right? All right. Well, that's all we got for you guys today. We'll be back tomorrow night at 10, 9 p.m. at twitch.tv backslash comic and game core for our catch up on The Mandalorian. Uh, we'll talk more about the wrestling awards and why everyone got nominated the way they did and all that good stuff and whatever else Marcus and I can cobble together. Yeah, it, it, it is one of the last two, three shows of the of the year before we do our New Year's Eve marathon. We will have no new shows starting next week. Correct. So the twenty second through the thirtieth, we're off in anticipation for our New Year's Eve marathon. And to to counter that, we will be off from the first to the fourth as well. But we will return on the fifth for our regular viewing schedule. So. This is this is our last week. This is the end, the end, the end of our story. <laughs> and he gets ran over by Yakko. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach. Unless you got anything else you want to say, no. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving us a chance. And remember to watch more wrestling. Thackeray, take us home. We love you, Sherboygan. Sure